Thank you for visiting this limited series, the infection was initially mild, my small town city council run, the toxic American pandemic response, and what both mean for the future of the country, written by Heather Christina Schmidt. You can view the entire series now, on SchmidtTalks.com, or subscribe to get it sent in parts to your email box weekly. If the two political parties do not even believe on some level in the government they are elected to run, what, really, is left? When we entrust them with our lives, as the social contract dictates, and they in turn do not even attempt to keep up their end of the bargain, we know that America's disease has raged so far beyond a point, it may not be possible to bring it back from the brink. Perhaps the evidence of just how deadly our infection in American politics truly is can be found in the politicization of the pandemic response. When I say this though I don't mean things like masks are for Democrats, or Republicans are anti-voxers. Beyond the fact that statistically speaking, neither of those is an entirely true statement, rather the issue of each is nuanced and rooted in a variety of issues, some political, while others socioeconomic and racial, those are not the real sentiments that have politicized the pandemic. It's been in how decisions at all levels of government have been made. At some point, it became evident that pandemic policy was going to be dictated not by what was right or wrong, but how people would react. This alone is the very definition of politicization. Mask policies were not a blue state or red state thing, rather an issue of whether or not polls came back stating people would wear them or thought they were useful. Critical voter blocks were polled, rather than scientists and doctors. Mandates for vaccines or vaccine verification were made, or not made, on party line philosophies, as well, not on the truly empirical evidence that showed the efficacy of vaccines, the shots, not the mandates. My problem as a candidate, and an organizer and advocate since, is that I have failed to jump in on that party line. In return, I'm accused of being everything, a socialist, a communist, a radical, an idiot, an anti-vaxxer, a conspirator, a Trump apologist, a CCP agent, a demon sent from hell to inject people with COVID vaccine. Everything. My status as just as much not a puppet for the Democratic Party as not a puppet for the GOP became clear to many of them when, quite some time after the election, I criticized a decision of Joe Biden's on Twitter. Suddenly I was seen as a liability to the Democrats, too progressive in my thinking. Some thought it was a sign I was a Republican plant, I can assure you all, I am not that interesting. It really doesn't matter in the end who I was with, though, the point was that I was not blindly allegiant to any of them, which we see now, on both sides, gets you kicked out. And this is the real crux of the argument, the Democrats and the Republicans are just one club of infected political ideologues. Blue MAGA, Red MAGA, both are fundamentally MAGA. And as Carlin says, it's a big club, and you ain't in it. The truth is, I advocate for what I think is right. I really, and truly, believe simply in improving our material conditions and quality of life. I really, and truly, believe this can be done from the standpoint of public health. At the end of the day, almost all things can lead you down that road. Typically, I can argue for this from the perspective of facts and reason, unfortunately, though, those are two things that come as a threat to those unable to easily use them when those very things confront the sycophantic drones of either party. When I was running for city council, early on, Another candidate who was deep into the local Democratic Party contacted me to lecture me about FEC laws and my campaign materials. In it she offered to bring another Dem Party insider to help me out. Having worked on so many campaigns in my life, as well as for the labor unions, I knew how it all worked already. Should I have been insulted that she didn't know this? Maybe, but then I didn't have time to be offended. The truth is, I barely had the time to run the campaign, let alone do that and play extraneous personality politics. I thanked her and politely mentioned that I was aware so wouldn't need the help. Perhaps that was my mistake, but with the little time I had to run my city council campaign, I didn't prioritize humoring local political party insiders, if you can call them that, on my schedule. I rarely heard from any of the local Democrats again after that. So I stopped worrying much about what they thought, stayed true to myself, and in turn got into a lot of trouble with the locals. When a local mom blogger who is in local politics in so far as she's on committees but is too narcissistic and unhinged for me to pay much attention to, was drunk posting on Facebook about another mom not tipping enough to her Instacart driver, I commented maybe she simply didn't have the money but still needed the service. Could she be COVID positive? This became her rallying cry to consider me the loose cannon that other Democrats had warned her about. She's had a target on my back since. 
but those were more personality politics than they were policy politics. Of course on those I got into trouble too. When locals that had called on the community to stay home, social distance, and do the right thing all along, were suddenly having parties, going to work sick, and bragging about going into stores maskless because they had been vaccinated, while children out in the community still were not, I called them out and asked them to please hold the line to protect kids. Another rallying cry. I wrote our city council, asking them why they broke from the state's mask guidance, making masks optional even as children in our community were being hospitalized from COVID. Later, I wrote them again, begging them to have mobile vaccination clinics at community events. When they didn't respond to either, I called them out in the local paper. Another rallying cry. When Democrats and Republicans alike started to back further into their corners, openly suggesting retaliation towards their political opponents on school boards and neighborhood councils, one even suggesting that a school board member be evicted from her home so she could no longer represent the district, something that has since initially writing this happened to me and my family, I spoke up. Another rallying cry. Ultimately, I'm just a mom. I write. I post on my blog. I take graduate courses. I advocate for others. I spend a lot of time talking to people that are in the community that want better material conditions. And I spend the bulk of my days just being with my kids. On the campaign, and every day since, I have come into contact with so many people just like me. Many volunteered for my campaign, many have continued to contact me to this day. Just average people sick of the disease that is running our community, sick of the infection that runs unabated in City Hall and beyond. The infection was initially mild. It was a wild plot to take over America, but that nobody ever thought would happen. It was some infighting in just one, toxic congressional district. It was one, unqualified party favored council member, on a board of otherwise entirely qualified and impartial individuals. Today it is all of them. It is all of them, and they are in control of everything. As time goes on since my failed bid for city council, I've become more worried about both my community, and America on the whole. It would be one thing if this was just isolated. But quite clearly, it is not. Politics has always been cutthroat and nasty, always in the state of nature, but never has it been so toxic that the host body joins the mild infection in destroying everything in its path, friend or foe. The solution, of course, is that we inject the body politic with massive amounts of medication, antibiotics, steroids, anti-inflammatories, the works. We reform elections so that money becomes less of a driving factor, so that lobbyists cannot control so much of our public policy. Who reforms elections is as important as the reforms themselves, though, reform must be done by the voters. Not the mom bloggers, committee members, and each board or council doing it their own way, but the voters. All of them. Universally. We take limits a step further than number of terms, and apply them to election spending. We publish campaign contributions for each candidate in the election pamphlets that come with the ballots. Because who you elect is never just the personality you click at the polls, it's everyone that donated to their campaign too. We hold leaders accountable for their failings. We have more oversight. In a municipal government, we allow voters to take part in appointments and have hiring hearings that the public can view. In higher levels of government, like Congress and the presidency, we do the same, only more so. Perhaps the boldest move would be that we institute ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting, combined with very systemic election reform created by voters, not politicians, would go far to break up the two party system and level the playing field so that more qualified candidates may come to the surface. Because let's be honest, both the Democrats and Republicans are equally, in their own ways, the source of the infection to begin with. And representative government does not work if the representatives see who they represent by how much money they've donated, or don't believe in the government they've taken an oath to uphold. Doing this, and more, would go far in changing America. In curing the infection, and in restoring us to a place that can do the work of representing people on every level, these reforms must be had to restore integrity. As high as the presidency, and as low as a sanitation board, if we do not stop this infestation from plaguing us, it's hard to see how we will come out the other side of it. Remember that we can always go back from whence we came. The infection was initially mild. It may never be completely gone, but it can be controlled to be mild again. This has been a limited series by Heather Christina Schmidt on SchmidtTalks.com. To get more information, or updates about future projects, hit subscribe today.
Thank you to our sponsors and subscribers like you. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay aware.